Ah, uh, let us begin. So, okay. I said that um, we are. We always have, get requests for weird, and you know, beyond the palette, we embrace weird beyond the palette. Um, and so I've chosen this image. What is so weird about this? You're saying that's not weird. That's a pretty young lady with a boob exposed, um, sitting by a lake, looking into a, a little pool of, of water, um, enjoying her reflection very much, I'm going to say, checking out her hair. Um, you know, she's, uh, she's not looking too unhappy with life, is she? It's, it's, a, it's a lovely image. Um, yeah, it gets weird though. Okay, so this is an image by John William Waterhouse. Um, from um, 1909. So Waterhouse was, um, he was sort of associated with the Pre-Raphaelites, but he wasn't actually a Pre-Raphaelite artist. So the Pre-Raphaelites came b before him. You know why they're called Pre-Raphaelites? Well, obviously it has something to do with Raphael. Um, and basically the Pre-Raphaelite artists, um, late 19th century, they rebelled against the art that came after Raphael. They thought that Raphael was um, was quite instrumental in leading artists in a direction that they didn't enjoy at all. You know, the kind of the, the lack of detail. Everything was just a little bit too, um, a little bit too soft and smudged at the edges for them. They liked sort of sharper, clearer images with more detail, like they thought um, the artists, the images the artists were producing in, um, well, well pre-Raphael, like um, uh, sort of 14th, 15th century pre-Raphael. So that's why they're called the Pre-Raphaelites. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent. Uh, so Waterhouse, yeah, so he painted this image, 1909. Um, and this is an image of Lamia. So why did he paint this image? What was his starting point? What was his reference point? Well, his reference was a poem by Keats. And in the poem by Keats, um, it's quite a strange poem, but Keats talks about this lady called Lamia, who it, at the beginning of the poem, she is a serpent. Um, and as a serpent, uh, she sees a lot and she's spotted this absolutely gorgeous guy. She thinks he's delicious, but she's like, oh, this isn't going to work for me. I'm never going to be able to seduce him as a serpent. He's going to run a mile. Um, so as I'm saying serpent, are you beginning to think, oh, yeah, actually, that sort of cloth thing that I thought the beautiful blue and gold on her lap um, and kind of by the side of her, um, that's actually not a cloth at all. That is actually a snakeskin on her lap. So, oh, serpent. There's also a serpent, well, in fact, there's a tiny serpent head right over to the... Um, to the left of the painting, you can't really see it. It's quite disguised within the trees, which is sort of the whole point, isn't it? it sort of disguises, but then over to the right, you see more. Um, let's just bring up a bit to the right so you can see it in a bit more detail. There you go, look, a snake. So there is actually a snake by the side of her, all camouflaged in this beautiful and beautifully depicted, with all these little details, um, this, this sort of wood, woodlandscape. Woodlandscape? Woodscape. Yeah, anyway, woodscape, whatever. Um, so let's come back to the full image. So she, yes, so Lamia, she is, she's, she's a serpent. She fancies this guy. She thinks I'm never gonna be able to seduce him. Along comes Hermes. So it gets weird. Um, and Hermes is looking for a nymph. Lamia happens to know where this nymph is. So Hermes really fancies this nymph. This nymph doesn't want anything to do with Hermes, the messenger god. Um, and so she's hiding from him. Lamia says to Hermes, like as a snake, hello Hermes. He's like, he's not worried about that at all because um, you know everyone's always shape-shifting all over the place in, in Greek mythology. Um, and, and, and indeed in Keats's poem, apparently. Um, so, so Lamia says to Hermes, can you, um, you know, I know you're looking for this nymph, 
I know where she is. If I point her out to you, then it's like, no, no, shut up. Lamia completely ignores the nymph. Um, she says, you know, if, if I tell you where she is, will you transform me into a beautiful woman? Or kind of, or um, I say transform, the implication is that she has started out life somehow as a, as a beautiful woman and then somehow has been transformed into a, a snake somewhere along the line. Anyway, so Hermes like, yeah, that's a great deal. So she tells him where the nymph is. He turns her into a beautiful woman. Off she goes to seduce a her lovely man so this is also by Waterhouse this is a little bit earlier so here she is I mean like and obviously he is gonna be pretty beguiled by this lovely lady but we see again if you look if you look closely I mean like her dress is a little bit snaky skinny likey um you know I think that's a snake isn't that it's sort of slithering around at the, uh, the the bottom of the image um so she says to this um you know so so she goes and she seduces this this guy that she really really fancies and off they go together he can't resist her off they go together and um and they live together in the poem for several months until he says to her, um, you know, Lamia, darling, I really think that we ought to get married. You know, I just want to be with you forever. You're the woman of my dreams. I want to marry you. She's like, mm, I don't really want to get married. You know, she's like, well, I haven't got any friends or family. Do we need to get married? He says, yes, yes, I insist. We want to, I want to marry you. And so she said, okay, that's, that's fine. Um, you know, I won't have anybody on my side of the church, but, um, and I know you'll have a lot of people, and I know you know a lot of people, but um, there's one person I would really appreciate if you didn't invite, and that is, you know that old sort of philosopher guy, Apollonius? Yeah, don't invite him, I'm not keen on him. So he thinks, okay, well, I don't know why Apollonius can't be invited, but, you know, if that's what she wants, that's fine. Um, so philosopher Apollonius isn't invited. What did he ever do to Lamia, you might be asking? Well, she knows that he is going to see through her disguise. She knows that he will know her what she is. So, day of the wedding comes. Unfortunately for Lamia, Apollonius has invited himself. He's a great friend of her husband to be, um, or you know, her, her now husband. Um, and, and so he's there and he's at this feast. And it's during the, the big wedding feast, everyone's having a great time. Then he starts looking at Lamia and he's fixated on her and she thinks, oh, well, here we go. And he announces to the entire wedding party that in fact uh, this young lad hasn't married a beautiful young lady he has married a serpent he's like you you're a serpent um, now you can ask yourselves okay well you know she looks like a lady you know what <laughs> what's what's the problem with that um I think the implication is, is that as a serpent, there is some kind of, you know, serpent, Garden of Eden, um, evil, uh, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a damning implication. Anyway, it doesn't go down well with Lamia um, because she disappears. Um, the whole wedding feast is completely ruined. Everyone was having a great time and now they're not. And the guy that she has just married um, dies of a broken heart you know he's like so they're both gone um you know this is what i love about this is what i love this is what i love about 11s is um if we're not talking about syphilis we're talking about terrible marriages this one didn't even get off the ground so so you know so she knew that apollonius shouldn't come to the wedding she was absolutely right um because uh, yes he kind of exploded everything so she didn't get a man in the end and i think the sort of moral of the story in the, or the moral of the poem is that um you know just because something looks nice doesn't mean that they aren't or they, that, that it is nice or that the specifically talking about people you know a beautiful woman doesn't equal necessarily a good woman and an ugly woman doesn't necessarily equal a bad woman oh shit uh, so that is Keats's poem. Right, so how do we make the jump from this beautiful women, snakes and, and, and so on to 
this because this is also Lamia. Okay, or I come back. I don't know which one to show you first. I mean, my goodness, or this. Um, these, these that I found. So I was looking for um, a painting of Lamia from Greek mythology. So it all stems back to Greek mythology. So Keats took his inspiration from um, from the ancient Greeks. And, you know, who does weird better than the ancient Greeks? I can't think of anyone, can you? So this is Lamia. So you've got the snaky bit and you've got a baby crying a lot, okay? Um, this is from scienceinfo.org or something, by the way. Um, this, yeah, it's obviously digital. Um, this is also Lamia. Um, also has, if you notice, she kind of looks like um, a, a spider here, doesn't she? But you've got the serpent tail again, and you've got the babies like sort of trying to escape. But there's a bit of a, um, there's a bit of a, a sort of yeah kangaroo vibe maybe as well going on there. Anyway, uh, so how do you get to, from from beautiful to to these images? Even though we know that she was, you know, there's this kind of whole snake thing, right? Greek mythology. So Lamia in Greek mythology, and, and as I said, I couldn't find an image of this kind of from, you know, from the Renaissance or something. Um, I, I think that it wasn't um, a particularly well-known myth, but, uh, <laughs> or they just didn't know what to, what to depict. Um, I wouldn't have minded seeing the story of Lamia in uh, Hieronymus' Bosch's hands. I think that could have been quite, uh, quite an interesting one. Anyway, um, so, she starts life in um, in Greek mythology as a beautiful, beautiful. Um, some people say that she was the queen of Libya. Um, she was possibly the daughter of Poseidon, the sea god Poseidon, um, and unknown mother. Her parentage has been disputed, um, but she was absolutely lovely and. When you're lovely, you quite often manage to attract the attention of Zeus. And when you've attracted the attention, attracted the attention of Zeus, things are gonna generally go wrong for you. Um, so he, Zeus, is like, oh, I really fancy you. Um, even though if she was Poseidon's daughter, that would have made her Zeus's niece, not technically legal but who cared in Greek mythology um, and they start this affair this beautiful rapturous affair um, and what happens if you have an affair with Zeus well you get pregnant always and when you've had Zeus's children what also then always happens Zeus's wife Hera who is also by the way his sister and Poseidon's sister um, she gets really, really jealous and she exacts revenge. So the thing is, she doesn't really exact revenge on Zeus, her husband. I think she's just so used to his terrible philandering ways. She always exacts revenge on the poor woman that he's been dallying with. So what revenge does she wreak on beautiful Lamia? Well, she takes her children and she kills them. Nice. Um, some people say that this makes Lamia so utterly desolate that Lamia turns into a kind of a, a monster, serpent, monster, snake, dragon, whatever. Um, some people say that, or in some versions of the story, um, Hera is um, actually just sort of Ping turns her into the monster. Yeah, so it could be grief. It could be this sort of this transformation that's been affected by um, affected by um, Hera. But yeah, so it doesn't it doesn't go well for her. So now she is this horrible monster. Um, she is absolutely overcome by grief. But even worse, because her children have been killed by Hera, she decides that she is going to basically dedicate the rest of her life to killing other people's children. So she just spends her life rampaging around, stealing children. And some people say that she actually eats them. So she's vampiric as well. Um, still today, in in um, in some parts of the world, I think in um, in Greece in particular, 
like they don't um, parents don't threaten their children with the bogeyman they 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 threaten their children with lamia it's like if you're not good then lamia will come and get you the kids are like ah, no. you can see why um so yeah that's pretty bad and i know what you're thinking you're thinking okay you know she's a woman she's a monster why don't you just why wasn't she just killed you know let her go to sleep when she's asleep kill her that's the best thing for everybody oh problem with that story problem with that uh, with that idea um the problem is is that in some versions of the story Hera also <laughs> poor Lamia Hera also um makes her um like cast a spell so her eyes can't close so she can't, she can't go to sleep either um so, so not only has she been transformed into some horrific snake monster thing who rampages around eating children but she can't get any respite from it because she can't sleep either Zeus, bless him, does step in at this point and I would like to say that he gave Lamia some kind of eye mask so that she could at least like block out the light and maybe sleep. No, he doesn't do that. Of course he doesn't do that. He's Zeus. Um, Zeus, <laughs> Zeus makes her eyes, he plucks out her eyes and he makes her eyes uh, so that she can like take them out and pop them back in again. What a sweetheart, right? It's like, yay! Uh, so yes, so Lamia, the horrific serpent snake vampire with removable eyes how lovely um so you know let's just let's go back and just have a quick look at that one as well let's just have a look at her i mean yeah so someone is going for this um i think she was featured in a film by neil gaiman um and it was something beginning with s um, I can't remember the name of the film. Anyway, so she kind of she does pop up in um, in in sort of in, in films in culture uh, um, in in, gen in culture in general. That wasn't <laughs> wasn't very eloquent, was it? Um, so yeah, she does pop up from time to time. She also so Lamia then has sort of morphed. So it, it, um, sort of in in some tellings or a, a kind of one one. Um, uh, sort of a theory or a view of her is this that she is this um, seductress um, who can take the form of a beautiful woman and and then destroy destroy men essentially um, and then obviously there's the the, the vampiric baby eating Lamia um, she's also morphed into um, monsters or beasts like this uh, so this is the Lamia from um, from the, the 17th century, the very beginning of the 17th century. So she has earned a place in the book of four-legged beasts by Edward Topsell, um, first published, I think, 1607. Um, and, and basically this book was, um, it's like an, an encyclopedia of all four-footed beasts, both real and imagined um that uh, yes that that have, have, have that were known and so the lamia here um so the description is is that she has the the legs of a goat um she has the the, the hind legs of a goat the four legs of a bear um she has a a body of a the body of a serpent but it's covered in scales like a dragon she has the head and breasts of a woman um but I'm going to say, just looking between her hind legs, I don't think that this is a female Lamia. So I think the artist is saying, I don't know who the artist is, by the way, it's, um, this is a woodcut. Um, yeah, I don't, yeah, I mean, that's a boy, right? I think that's a boy. Um, so yeah, and, and you wouldn't want to meet this Lamia because... <laughs> So they, they, they give the description, the book gives the description, and then <laughs> it says, oh, and if you meet the lam a lamia in your garden, you would do best to avoid it. Really? Uh, because if it bites you, then your wound will not heal, they're, and they're very aggressive, and your wound will not heal until you hear the roar of another beast. Okay. Um probably i'm gonna say that she'd probably ruin your hardy perennials as well so you don't want a lamia in your garden if you see a lamia in your garden 
then ignore it. Um, or yeah, close, close your doors and windows and lock them. Definitely don't go out and try and feed her uh, because she will bite you and that will not be good. So one of those tales from, um, from beautiful woman, Keats. Oops, no, that's the wrong one. There we go. From this beautiful woman, Keats, uh, from Keats's poem to seductress to vampiric baby stealer. Um, yeah, and along the way, garden pest that's lamia it's a not it's, it's a weird unhappy story um and i'm gonna turn comments back on so yes um hello richard uh yeah that i wish i wish that an artist, I wish yeah, a Renaissance artist had picked up that story because I would have loved to have seen what they did with Lamia <laughs> um, uh, from from classical Greek well from classical mythology. Not not great, not great anyway. So there we go. Um, weird and wonderful. Apparently, one of Lamia's children did actually survive, and one of her children is supposed to be Scylla. Um, who was also transformed into a monster, like a six-headed monster, and Scylla was responsible for the death of a lot of sailors. So possibly I might do Scylla next week. Um, yeah, not uh, not another unhappy story about a woman who was beautiful and then kind of got punished for it or something. Um, You've been in horror movie, horror movie mood of late, so loving the Lamia session. She's scary. She is scary. Stimulating and inspiring for my lyrics. Yes, Holly. <gasps> Write a story about Lamia. Um, yeah, like I say, she does pop up in popular culture. Um, yeah, but uh, you wouldn't want to meet her. So there we go. On that note... Have a lovely, lovely day. Have a lovely weekend. This will be posted at some point um, if you if you missed it or want to, to go back to it um, on Instagram and on Facebook or you can access it via my website. Also on my website, I have the Elevens' blog if you'd rather read about these things. Um, sometimes it's a bit more coherent from my live ramblings. Um, and yeah, next week, I don't know what we're going to do. Um, maybe we'll do Scylla. Maybe we'll do Scylla or something else. I did have something else in mind. I don't know. If you've got anything that you want me to cover, let me know as long as it's weird and wonderful. Of course it's going to be weird and wonderful. Okay, everyone, have a great weekend and I will see you next Thursday. Bye. Bye.